Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our live stream here on Facebook, on the Formula Botanica Facebook page and on YouTube. So I don't know where you're watching us, but I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. And if you are watching us live, drop me a, um, a message in the chat and tell me where you are in the world. I always love watching all the countries come past. It's wonderful to see what an amazing global audience we have. So my name is Lorraine. I run Formula Botanica. We are the online organic cosmetic formulation school. We have over 12,000 students. We're in 176 countries with our amazing student community. And uh, yes, we love teaching people how to formulate. In fact, we're on a mission to teach the world to formulate. And I am joined by a very special guest today, my dear friend, Melinda Koss, who is a skincare business mentor. Well, I'm going to get Melinda to introduce herself as well in a minute and I hope you have heard of Melinda already because we've done many things together over the years and she is absolutely amazing and I am so so pleased that she's here with me today so Melinda do you want to introduce yourself for everyone watching hi Lorraine lovely to be here see you again I've seen you twice in one week we were in cl yes. on Clubhouse the other night uh, she, you introduced me to Clubhouse and that was brilliant and here we are again so it's just great um so I've been coaching skincare entrepreneurs, taking them on the journey from concept, creating the concept for their brand, right through to international distribution. And I've been doing that now for 20 diddly something years. <laughs> um, and um, I love working with my clients. Um, my thing is really, uh, my strength is probably mindset and concept creation and um, I'm really happy to be with you today to talk to your guys I've worked with a lot of your guys and uh, that's me yeah yeah well wonderful to have you here so we're going to be on for about an hour depending on how many questions we get from you in the audience so please do take part if you have a question um, then post it up and we'll be happy to try and get to as many as we can and I can already see we've got people joining us from UK, South Africa, Poland, Trinidad and Tobago, US, Portugal, Kenya, Nigeria, Philippines, India. Wow, what a global community. We've only been going for two minutes. <laughs> Amazing. So today we're talking about how self-knowledge can impact your beauty brand success. And Melinda has something that she wants to share with you. So we're going to be talking about how to nail your brand message. Um, but I think before we go down that route, Perhaps you can tell us what self-knowledge actually means, Melinda. Well, self-knowledge um, means your strengths and weaknesses, and, and it, it splits into two things, really. It's your, it's your commercial knowledge, so understanding what you can do and what you can't do. Um, when you're starting a brand, being realistic about your resources, your time, um, your priorities, all those things. Um, and also on the creative side, understanding who you are, um, what I mean, it could, it's as subtle as what clothes you wear, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. Um, do you like to party? Do you, you know, wh wh who are you? Who are you? So because it, it gets much, much if you're launching a brand, it's far easier to do it from a situation of I am this and I have this rather than um, starting, you know, blindly in a world that you don't understand. That so makes that's, perfect that's... sense. Yeah, no, it's about understanding who you are as, a, as an entrepreneur, basically. Absolutely. So why is having that knowledge about yourself so important when you first get started? Well, I think that... Um, the, the the way that we create a business today, um, and I'm only talking online, we're, we're in the online era, is by creating a tribe. And in order to create a tribe, we have to know what it is about us, us being the brand, because we are, you know, we are the, the face of our brand more, more often than not, that will attract that tribe. So how are we going to reach them? So the first question you have to ask yourself, I mean, you go through Formula Botanica, um, you get this wonderful passion for, a creative passion for playing with the oils, the understanding of the problems that, the, that the, your products can, can correct. You get totally, totally immersed in that. And you often also get immersed in, a community of people that are all on that same journey and it's very um easy to forget that three quarters of the world isn't like that you know the, your customer base actually isn't like that 
So knowing who you are and what your passion is, is a great starting point for how you're going to build a tribe around you. Does that make, does that make sense? Absolutely. It does. Yes. And I think that ties in with obviously this new program that you're launching as well called nail your brand yeah. message. That's yeah. its name, right? That's, that's its name. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. what, what does that mean then? Let's for, let's move on from the self-knowledge into how to nail your brand message. Let's start off. Okay. With so, so, well, I'll, I'll tell you how we get there um, in, in the program. So what I do in that program is I send out a really, really in-depth questionnaire. So if it takes you less than two hours to fill it in, you haven't done it properly. You know, it's a real pour out everything about yourself, everything about your ambition, who you are, um, what lights you up, all, all this sort of stuff. Um, and then we get on a call and we work out how we can find practical ways in line with who, you know, your what you've got and your resources and, and whatever to um, nail a message that fits in comfortably with all those things that you've got. Because I, I think what happens quite often is we, we jump on bandwagons. So right now, it's all about sustainability, um, and it's about um, packaging, and it's about um, uh, sex, neut sex neutrality. It's all, all these sort of vaguely political issues, and they're all around us. They're buzzing, especially if we move in these communities. They're buzzing with everything we do. But it makes us kind of forget that three quarters of the world are not are not actually catching on to this. Not, not, it's not their prime objective. Um, and creating a brand is still to some degree about making yourself look great so you will attract a partner <laughs> or having great aspirations around, uh, you know, uh, it's, I mean, luxury. Luxury brands are all about aspiration. So you kind of need to work out where you, where you fit into all this. And what the best message is for you to get to get out there. That makes perfect sense. And just to say, um, we've got a lot more people on. <laughs> we've, I've just been looking at the countries. We've got people now joining us from Belgium, Malaysia, Australia, Cyprus, Nepal, Sierra Leone, Hong Kong, Netherlands, wow. Canada, Seychelles. I feel we're in the wrong country at the moment. I mean, this is, a, <laughs> this is, this is another point. You know, I, I mean, it's really interesting because I think quite often when we're creating a brand, we miss the obvious. So, um, for example, I was coaching a client um, who was doing the normal thing, you know, sustainability, natural, all, all these things. This was she, she was convinced this was going to be her message. And she'd completely overlooked the fact that she lived and worked in Paris. Now, you, you know, Paris is the beauty center of the world, the fashion center of the world. And if you don't put Paris on your label when you're living in Paris, you, you've completely lost it. I've had people come to me who are pharmacists and haven't mentioned that that sort of credibility in their branding story. Um, so, uh, it, and it's often different, difficult to do. You often need somebody else to help you do that, to actually stand back and look at the whole picture yeah. and say, that's your message. <laughs> you know, that's what we've got to go with. Yeah, and um, you've obviously been doing this for a long time with the clients that you have. I mean, are there any particular examples that you can share with us where you've done exactly that? Yes, and, but, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I have one client who came to me wanting to do a natural skincare brand for women. And on our first session, she, she actually signed up for my VIP program. But on our first session, um, where, where I get really get to know people, um, it turned out that her whole life had been involved in, with horses. And she'd worked in the industry. She'd worked in the show jumping industry and she 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 was had stables at home she was passionate about horses so i said right well we're not going to do a beauty brand we're going to do a natural organic grooming brand for horses because because her customer base is already within reach and i yeah. think this is the most important thing you have to ask yourself when you're thinking about setting up a skincare business the first question you should ask yourself is how am i going to sell this you know you define who your client is but how am I going to reach that client? And if you actually have a community of people around you already that like you and you, you might be talking about them in a, in a chess group, it doesn't actually matter. Um, you, you are step, your streets are ahead in the game. 
because that's what it's about. It's about tribe building. And and how do you find people respond when you point out something like that? Where you say, well, you've been working with yeah. horses for decades, <laughs> move, actually, move into this area. <laughs> actually, I'll never forget her face because it was like a light bulb um, turned on because she said, this was so close to me and I didn't see it. You know, and she has mm -hmm. gone on to create a really successful natural um, horse brand. And, you know, I've had people that have got passions for painting or passions for sport or whatever. And we've shifted the focus away because people follow this bandwagon. You know, they're, they're so convinced about the natural, the, that, that this is going to be the difference. This is going to be the thing that lifts them above everybody else. But it isn't. These things, as soon as L'Oreal are doing it, these things become necessities, not USPs. It should be, you know, taken as said that you, you're going to do your best to make your product sustainable. Um, but you, it, there's a lot of noise out there and a lot of competition. So you have to come up with something really unique and special in order to... Um, you know, be seen above the crowd. And you don't have to be special to everybody. This is the other thing. Everybody thinks they've got to be special to everybody. We're <laughs> online, you know, we reach 4.6 billion people. That number is sort of etched in my brain. You don't need that many people um, of that you are, you are like-minded with to build yourself a very, very good business. So is it almost as if, uh, because the stories you're telling me, and obviously I've heard many stories from your clients <laughs> over the years, because so many of them have gone through our courses first and then gone on to work with you one on one. Mm. Um, the story almost sounds as if sometimes people need permission to step into who they really are. Do you, is that what I, you I think? think that, as well? I think they, I think they need permission, <clears throat> and I think that fear comes into it because people have a sense that they need to be doing what everybody else is doing, so they're taking mm. their lead from within the industry. So, I mean, if you just look outside the industry for a moment, if you look at, um, there's, oh God, the name's gone. There's a beer, a craft beer company that are taking the world by storm. Um, Brewdog? Brewdog, producing a punk beer. And their clients are even funding it. And the way they've done that is to build this hugely strong community. And you feel like you're part of a club, you know, it, you, yeah. you, you, it, and, and it's a really, really, I mean, there's a number of, of brands that have done this. Um, and, and there's, I, I saw a, a video the other day about a young, a young teenager who'd come up with a brow product. Um, and it was because she was at uni and all her friends were having problems with their brows. And she had a lot of energy and she taught their language. And she got this brand going from nowhere. And she's done absolutely brilliantly with it because she was talking to her people and solving a problem that she was totally familiar with. And she could talk about with heart and authenticity in their language. So yes. this is, so I think a lot of people try to be what they think they should be rather than who they actually are. I love that. I really love that because I see so many people start brands that have nothing to do with them at all. I was looking at one the other day with someone who, um, lives here in Europe and was starting a brand that had something to do with a place that they'd visited many many years ago and it just didn't come back in the in the branding or the packaging or the name it was it was completely disjointed and I, I see so many people not put themselves into it I wonder almost I wonder what you think about this is it almost an element of fear of of putting yourself into something that makes you so visible I think so, but it doesn't, and I think a lot of people, I mean, they don't want to front their brand. They don't want to be the, the person on all the videos. And I think that's fair enough if you know yourself well enough to know that at the beginning. So don't try and be something you're not. But you need to get, if in those circumstances, you need to get someone that can do that for you because that personal association is really important. Um, I, I mean, we were talking the other night to um, to a guy who who was um, looking on on the on the um, what's it called clubhouse clubhouse, <laughs> clubhouse. Um, who was uh, creating a sustainable brand and he wanted to know what his message should be and I and I I, I sort of looked at him and said actually you know your message is that you're a guy. Because, you know, there's a reason that couturiers and um, top chefs are all men. And that is because women, th th uh, there's a great reversal going on here, but that is because women actually, outside of our politically correct group, if you like, women still want the approval of men. Or they like men that seem to care about how they 
look and how they appear. So, you know, my feeling is we should be employing men to go out and, and sell our products for us. You know, they, they, they employed us long enough to, to sort of lie on their sports cars and sell their sports cars for them. Why not? Why not employ men? You know, let's turn the whole thing on its head. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really about understanding who you are and then understanding about how what what you stand for engages with your customer and how that they get sort of brought into the brand story. I just want to quickly mention a brand story who I know you've worked with because she's actually mentioned you on on interviews I've done with her as well. And that's um, Shelley, who runs Kiss Kiss Goodnight. And I remember her telling me that you were the one who said to her, you know, this is a baby skincare brand. This is all about the bedtime routine. Why don't you have a cartoon character on there? And and that's the sort of thing that I think people sometimes just need the to sloth. hear. The sloth. We've got a, yeah, we've got a sloth. It. Yeah, and we've talked about doing cuddly toys. I mean, if you think about um, the, the Meerkats yeah. thing with the insurance company. <laughs> and the Meerkats, are, yeah, it's a beautiful brand. She's done brilliantly with that. Yeah. Brilliantly with that. Um, uh, it, it, yeah, but the Meerkat himself has become more successful than the insurance company you know he's used in so many things now um so sometimes things i have a, a number of clients that are using that as a, as a device actually they they're coming up with characters or images outside of the the product that are, are the face of the product yeah um which is uh, look, I, I find branding i look, i'm not a graphic designer and I think you need a graphic designer always to get your brand absolutely right. Um, I, homemade brands are not on. Um, but the con con conceptualizing of it is my is my little piece of magic. Um, and I see this stuff. So I get and, and I've got the privilege of being able to not have to do it for myself anymore. Um, mm. Obviously, I had to do it for myself a lot in the past. But to do it with other with other clients so um yeah. that's what i do that's that's really what yeah. i do and i love i just shoot, that's my thing i just want to quickly mention one of our graduates as well who hasn't worked with you yet but who may well do um and she i think she i was showing you this before we started as well i think she's created something that's so strong in terms yeah. of the brand her brand's called yeah. nopalera she sent me all her products in the post i'm very grateful and she's created um it's based on the nopal cactus She's got all these bars and soaps. But as you can see, she's uh, she's of uh, Mexican descent. She lives in New York. And the cactus is even in the brand. You know, it, everything she does sort of stems from this, this authenticity in who she is. I mean, even the uh, the soaps that she makes are in the shape of a cactus branch. I mean, it's so clever. Yeah. It contains yeah, absolutely. Um, pea seed oil. And that is so authentic. And I see so few people really create something that strong yeah. so you're absolutely right so yeah. i guess the the question i have for you then is what can go wrong if you don't nail your brand message well if you try and create a general brand which i think most people because people find it really hard to understand that um just because they should you know, they, they think they should be creating something that everybody will love <laughs> you know, and that doesn't work. You have to create something that is ex that doesn't work today on the internet. You have to create something that is special for a special group of people. And if you don't do that, um, the requirement is that you invest absolute fortunes in marketing because um, you're up against the big boys, and you also have to have a huge range of products. Whereas um, if you go the specialist route and the authentic route you can actually do it with one hero product maybe two or three whatever um, and it could be about routine you know are you corporate are you rural are you urban are you um spiritual i mean all the all these all these questions you know are you, are you down to earth um are you do you like you know what sort of parties do you like to go to what sort of dinner parties would they be would everybody be dressed casually would they be dressed sex i mean all these things play into what you're comfortable with and what excites you and all these things should come through in your brand so to go to not nail your brand you're going to invest a great deal of money um and probably get nowhere <laughs> um yeah and the other interesting thing i have one client um who will remain nameless, but we absolutely nailed a very specific brand story for her. 
and she's already got um, offers of million pound investments. Wow! You know, because but but the investors haven't seen the product. It's not about the product. It's about the strength of the story. Mm. You know, yeah. Which um, people don't. You know, again, when you're immersed in the skincare and the goodness of the skincare, you don't realize how important all this. And people think, oh God, it's marketing. Actually, it's so creative. Um, it's so great to be able to stand up with your own brand and your own story and beautiful professional branding and get out there. So, yeah. Yeah. You spoke at, um, well, you've spoken at a couple of our conferences, but I remember the, the 2016 mm. conference that you came to talk at in London. And I remember, because I love this phrase, you said, you need to get your head out of the pot. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it, it look, it's great to make products. I'm not, I, you know, it's it's brilliant to do that. But I think that running a business, a, a mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs make is that running a business is a completely different discipline. And it's one that often requires compromise. Um, and if you're, again, knowing yourself, so if your true, true passion is just making product, you've got to ask yourself before you start investing money, do I have what it takes to create a brand? Or do I have, do I want the commercial pressure of running a business? Because there's, I mean, look, you know yourself. I mean, it's interesting with you. Let's talk about you for a minute. You know, you you came you came to this um uh, with with a great interest in environmental things and you and you're and you're a geek <laughs> um, um so the two combined created a great business but do you do you feel that you've absolutely played to your strengths here um it's taken me a while to get to the stage that i could because well first of all one of my big strengths is is organization and project management and you know getting getting stuff done i'm a doer um but in the beginning, I couldn't let all the environmental stuff out because there just wasn't a place for it. You know, I've really only found in the last year that I've been able to stand up and go, hi, everyone. Did you know, by the way, I've been a chartered environmentalist for the last 13 years? And everyone's gone, no, where did that come from? <laughs> I've not had an opportunity to let it shine because the market wasn't ready for it. So I've been holding back. And now I've gone, hello, I've got the credentials. Now I'm going to talk about <laughs> it. So you have to also bide your time with it, I guess, yes. when people are ready for it. Um, yeah. I could have probably gone in all guns blazing to start with, but I wouldn't have had the same audience. And you have to also recognize who you're selling to, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I, I getting, think you, sorry. Sorry, but I think you can also buck a trend. You know, as, as I said, mm. uh, I've come up with, you know, cosmetics and beauty have, been, have always been about sex. <laughs> That's very politically incorrect today. But you can buck a trend because two thirds of the world still believe that. It, it, that's a fact. Yeah. No, it is actually. I went on a podcast the other day and the host went, we all just want to be beautiful. And I went, hang on a minute. <laughs> That's not why I'm in here. <laughs> um, I do apologize, by the way, if you can hear any drilling. We're um, having work done oh. on the house. I told them not to interrupt me while I was live, but there you go. <laughs> so if you have a question for Melinda, please do post it up. I can see some coming in. So I'm going to start coming to them in a minute. I just had one more question. I'm going to mute myself <laughs> briefly. Uh, while well, they drill away. What are the common themes that you see people get wrong when they're creating a brand? Oh, they always put a leaf on their logo. <laughs> uh, you know, it's this nature, the nature thing. Um, and I just think, look, it's important. Of course, it's important. Um, but it needs to be expressed in different ways because, it, you know, something if something's been done to death, and again, I think they're copying. They're copying what's what's going on. It can be done with great style, um, but it takes a lot to get away with having a, 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 a leave. I think one of the biggest issues that I have is people that do their own branding and cannot see the difference. Because I know that when, uh, I, and I, I'm not a branding agency, but I know that when they get it done professionally, um, and it comes back to them, and they can see the difference. The empowering, the empowerment of that, yeah, yeah. It says it but already. Just the empowerment of that. Um, it makes them feel they suddenly grow up. They suddenly look at it and see, I've got something serious here. Yeah, it's not a hobby. It is absolutely something that can make millions. And when you cut through that noise, it is phenomenal to watch. And, you know, coming back to Nopalera, Sandra, who, who launched this, you know, she was in 50 retailers within three months of launching. Mm -hmm. 
Um, she did this paycheck to paycheck, um, single mother, didn't have much cash to put in it. By month two, she was moving into commercial premises. And it just goes to show that when you have something that is truly authentic, you just cut through the noise and it's yeah. phenomenal to watch. Yeah. Right, let's come to a couple of questions. I'm going to put them up on the screen here. So Debbie asks, do you recommend that we use a specialized ingredient such as hibiscus? I, okay. I guess it's part of our brand. Yeah, I, I think you can do that, but it has to be really special. So, for example, I'm working with a client at the moment who has um, who's found this ingredient that comes from a tree bark in Burma and nobody's using it yet. And, you know, her brand is very much, it's also helping the community out there, but her brand is very, very focused on that. And I got, in, I, I run a, a private membership and I, I, I got them all to do press releases in there. And she did a, a press release and um, Shark Tank have come to her with it. But, wow. well, you know, because of the story. But, you know, if it's just an oil, you know, it, again, be very careful that you're not jumping on the bandwagon. I mean, rosehip mm -hmm. oil is gone now, you know, um, maroon oil is there. Um, but, you know, you've got to be, have something really, really special to, you could have one oil running through all your brand. But again, that message, like the cactus, but again, that message has to be, there has to be more to the message than that. Yeah, absolutely. I was talking to a journalist a while ago and she said, actually, you know, Lorraine, if you have any interesting Formula Botanica graduates that, that come through your courses that have press releases, send them to me. I'd love to see yeah. them. But she said, whatever you do, do not send me any press releases of someone who started a brand because their child had eczema and they couldn't <laughs> find anything and they went to make a product to cure it and then they cured their child's eczema and they realized that they had a massive gap in the market. She said, I don't understand why I still get these press releases. Yes, I know. I know. I know. This is a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> it is. That's yes. a Let's big see. one. Got another I mean, the other questions. thing is to do some research. You know, the number of people that come to me and think they've reinvented the wheel with their with their with their brand, or there's nothing out there. Well, where are you looking? You know, yeah. God's sake. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what that journalist said as well. She went, yeah. I just don't understand where these people are looking. <laughs> but then if you have something that is truly authentically yours, they will snap it up. And I've had a yeah. couple of graduates I've sent to her that have then got featured because I knew exactly what she was after. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got another couple of questions. If you have any questions for Melinda, by the way, put them in the chat and I will put them to Melinda as we're still here for another half an hour or so. So Anna asks, can a brand, a sophisticated brand, uh, match this mission of natural and non-plastic packaging? So this comes back to what you were saying earlier about, you know, sustainability is in at the moment. People are still talking about the natural, the green leaf. Can a sophisticated brand take that on? Um, I think that... Um, the mission of natural natural and non-plastic passion packaging is not a mission. Um, natural and non-plastic packaging is a necessity. If you're going to be a natural brand and you're going to be selling natural products, that's a, an absolute, it, it's a said, it's a said. In terms of sophisticated, that's where we have to dig deep into who you are and how you're going to express that. And what sort of sophisticated? There's a lot of different types of sophisticated out there. And your brand needs to focus on one group of people that you either you think are sophisticated or that, um, you know, if you were with me, that's that's what we would be doing with that. So what you're talking about is it's going to be high end. Mm. Um, you know, is it high end Paris? Is it high end travel? Is it high end beautiful restaurants? I mean, who are these people? What do they do? Where do they buy their clothes? What magazines do they read? Yeah. 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 I think there will come a point. I mean, 10 years ago, natural was a niche. It isn't now. Um, at the moment, sustainability is something everyone get, is getting into. In, in five years' time, that won't be a niche anymore either. It will just be a requirement. Mm. And, um, yeah, everyone. But I think, look, I think the world moves. The world is moving thirty times faster than it was just a couple of years back, and you've got to be ahead of the game. So if you see a bandwagon, you're too late. You know, it, 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 it's a said. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that set the cat amongst the pigeons. Everyone's going, well, where's my bandwagon? <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Let's go to another question. Tarjinda says, when you say brand, does that mean the look or feel of your products and packaging, or does it mean brand you and your story? It means both. 
So it could be that you've come up with products that are all gels and all spring colors. And that is the look and feel of your products and it becomes part of your brand. It also means your packaging and it also means your story. So the whole lot has to come, that's my whole point here. The whole lot has to come together in a really, really strong message because your message is not just your strap line. Your message is your visual, um, it's where you're seen. It's so much more than just your strap line. Hmm. Yeah, it's who you are. Deep down is what you're saying. Mm. Um, I just have to but put it's got to be up. consistent. It has to come across mm. in everything that you do. I think that's the important thing here. Yeah. You know what? I interviewed May Lindstrom actually on our um, oh, Green Media Conversations wow. podcast last week. Everybody I'm... wants to be May everybody wants to be May Lindstrom. <laughs> I was blown away by her. I mean, I have met people who embody the word authentic, but I have never met someone like May before. I mean, her North Star is true authenticity, and she does not wave from following that star. It it was phenomenal. I mean, the the episode will come out at the end of May, but I was blown away by her. Um, And people pick that up. Um, But that's expressed, I mean, in her photography. And, you know, you can feel the products in her photography. Everybody wants to be male, male and strong. It'd be nice if you wanted to be someone else. You know, well, don't, don't, she's got it. She's done it. Yes. Um, you know, there's you know, other I asked people her, you can be. <laughs> I asked her that question. I said, everyone wants to be you. I know, how does that feel that people keep making the blue cocoon? <laughs> and she was going, well, <laughs> everyone wants the blue cocoon in their life. So if I'm not the one to give it to them, then that's okay as well. And I thought that was an incredible mm-hmm. answer. But anyway. Well, I won't give away yeah. too much. I just have yeah. to put this one up on the screen because it made me laugh. Oksana says that I liked Lorraine. What I initially liked about Lorraine was that she's geeky. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's interesting. That's really that's really interesting. Let's see. Okay. Orit asks, where should I start to market after Facebook and Instagram? So this is a little bit beyond the brand story, but I suppose it really does still tie in with who you are as a brand. What would you recommend to someone who asks this question? Well, you you know, I think that right now it's why it's all we're talking about your route to market here as as well. We've got Facebook, we've got Instagram, we've got Clubhouse, we've got TikTok, we've got all these all these um, platforms which um, can take up your whole life but they're all there and and your audience depending who what your brand is your audience will be on one of them Um, but I think it's also about um, coming up with new ways to get to people and that is where a lot of creativity should be um, finding new ways to retail Um, so I mean I'm old enough to remember when the sock shop and knicker box launched and they, yeah, but they suddenly opened these tiny, like, kiosks yes. in, in main high streets. And they absolutely took the world by storm because they had low rent, um, small amounts of stock. They were niche. It was personal. You know, you weren't wandering in with nobody talking to you. You go into one of those, somebody's ju- going to jump on you. But that whole idea of finding new ways, and now we can do that online. You know, we can reach so many people. So you've got to start thinking outside the box and don't do what everybody else is doing um, yeah yeah just know, to add to that online party plan stuff there's <laughs> millions ambassadors there's millions of ways of doing it yeah I'd, I'd just also like to say that I see very few people put their opinions out into the world it continues to shock me because I've realized that part of our success is because I've just stood on a soapbox and went said things like anyone can formulate because they can and you know said it over and over and over but I've had it so many times when I've gone into our community and said I'd like to do a podcast or a blog or something on this topic everyone who has an opinion on this and there are thousands of you who I know do step up and tell me your opinion and people don't want to (coughs) and I think that ties with what you were saying as well is if you put yourself out there you know have something to say for yourself as well Yeah. yeah Yeah, you've got to own, you've got to own, look, confidence comes with time and confidence comes with success as well. Because once you've got that first big order, you check, I mean, I I watched one of my entrepreneurs go from a really shy person into this sort of fierce business woman. You could see it was, it was just crazy. So I think that building a business is very much a personal journey as well. And that should come through in your brand, you know, your confidence your power you become empowered your message as you grow reaches more people like the may lindstrom thing um it it takes on a life of its own Hmm. 
It does. Absolutely. And then people want to know who you are and they want to connect with you. And I've seen a couple of brand founders. Um, like I've saw, I saw Carmen actually in the, in the chat earlier who runs flower and spice. Carmen also has her own accounts on social media, public ones as a public figure. Uh, And people are starting. Oh, have I lost you? You still there? We're back. Yeah, I'm here. We're back. Yeah, I was just saying, you know, uh, Carmen, who runs Flower and Spice, I don't know if you're still there, Carmen, but, you know, she has her own accounts as well because people are following her as well as the brand. And it's the same with me, you know, and I think that's very clever to to watch some brand founders do that. Um, Let's see, we've got another question. People come to me because I'm an old, I'm an old, I'm an old diva. Now, I haven't always been an old diva, but I've actually owned, owned my, my own personal changes in Mm. my message, in my connections with people um i know who i am i know who i am you know it's it 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 works yeah yeah absolutely um jenny says i'm having a hard time finding a great graphic designer and packaging designer so i mean you very clearly said if you want to stand out don't do this yourself don't make a homespun brand because you won't stand out um so anyone who's getting started where should they look for someone to come and help them um well i i I have two two guys that I recommend to my clients. I think, it, but it's really difficult because I'm, I'm not, not going to give their names here. I don't think that I should do that, but it's really difficult because um, you can get a design for a hundred pounds and you can get a design for 15,000 pounds, you know, depending yeah. on how you, how you position yourself. So I, I work with a couple of agencies that come, it's about 2000 pounds, something like that to get a whole package and a, and a and graphics sorted but it's mostly the most important thing is that you see images that you relate to um so you know even if you go on people per hour or or um up, up work whatever have a deep look at the people's work have deep conversations make sure you go to someone that gives you a bit of choice um and 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 that's the way to do it so yeah yeah have to look around and find people who connect who you can connect with that makes perfect sense and also use our groups you know we have big groups here on facebook yeah. we've got our skincare entrepreneur mastermind melinda has her group talk to others in there and see if they can recommend people to you yeah. um let's see thomas has a great question you mentioned authenticity what are the expectations of this from a brand point of view what are the pitfalls of navigating the many variables defining authenticity it's a big question it sounds a lot more complicated than I think it is. Um, okay, so what is authenticity to you? Who are you? Um, you know, what style do you fit into? As I said, if you're at a dinner party, who do you want there? What do you want to talk about? What lights you up? What makes you feel good? I mean, these are, and then you take all these, all these, all the bits from these. And you put them all together and that's your authenticity. What do you stand for? What do you believe in? Um, um, What are the expectations of this from a brand point of view? Um, Will a brand, a good branding agency will take all the elements that you've got and be able to condense them into color schemes, imagery, fonts, and then beyond that, you've got to decide where to put your message. You know, this is, this is what people take a 16 week program for. So, but have you got anything to add to that? Um, no, I think I think you've nailed it. It is very much about, you know, embedding who you are into your brand. Um, and it has to come through in everything you do. Um, to give you a small example, you know, for instance, when I'm often talking on stage, I wear green. I'm I was going to green say, green. the green thing. <laughs> just don't always want to wear green you know <laughs> there are <laughs> limitations to that in my life and I put up a photo on Instagram this week because I, I uh, took part in an article in Coverture on carbon neutral beauty and um, the first two people who commented on my photo in which I was wearing a dark blue dress said I know this is off topic but I'm just not used to seeing you in green <laughs> Uh, or in a different color other than green and it was it was really amusing to me because of course you know my children my family my friends they're not used to watching me wear green all the time but it's so part of the brand now that that's what people expect and that's I suppose you know the sort of level of detail you almost have to go to yeah um, but it, yeah it shines through in everything you do I think the pitfall of nag- navigating the variables is being tempted to copy something someone else that that's the pitfall thinking well they're doing well with that therefore I will too 
yeah yeah so, it yeah. has to be it has to come from deep within you um okay we've got a question here from one of our youtube viewers um who says what can be the disadvantages to have your business under your own name interesting question yeah um i think I think there can be dis. There's people that have done it hugely successfully. There's the, the Joe Malones and the Thor Ashleys and all the Estee Lauders and all, all those people, uh, and it's great. I do think that it, it's slightly perilous because if anything happens to the founder, um, or you want to sell the business, it loses its power. Um, I think Laura Ashley was a classic with a classic example of that because the business was never the same once she she'd gone, um, and to some extent Anita Roddick, even though it wasn't called Anita Roddick, she was so strongly associated with it. Um, but then this can happen when you sell out anyway to a big to a big company, and and you're hopefully you're all going to make millions out of your businesses by selling out ultimately. Um, you may not think you want to right now, but in five years' time, believe me, <laughs> <laughs> when the millions start being waved at you. Yes, exactly. No, it's interesting. I mean, we see so many brands do this. There's nothing wrong with it. But yeah, as you say, you know, you are tied to it. I met um, Kate Somerville on, on Clubhouse the other day, and you know, she sold the brand, but still works there. But I suppose at mm. some point, if she steps out, it'd be very weird. I suppose it's mm. almost like and I haven't experienced this, I hasten to add, but it's like when you have a divorce and then someone keeps your name afterwards, I'd say that that would be quite weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Someone, uh, Anna asks, is it important to create a full line of products or should we create individual products? The heroes. I mean, you talked about hero products earlier. What do you think? I think the heroes, I think for the, for, for, for you guys, unless you've got a shed load of money, I would certainly start with the heroes. Um, another, another reason to do that, not just budget, um, but another reason to do that is because once you're out there and you've got your customer base, they're at that point going to want to see fresh ideas from you. So you can introduce new product slowly, but you already have your customer base. So the biggest issue that a small business has is the volume. You know, I, I believe everyone should go to contract manufacturers when they get serious um, for lots of reasons, which we're not going to talk about here. But um, uh, um, you are tied into big runs. So you need your audience first before you introduce new products. So commercially, it makes a lot more sense to build your brand on a small collection and then expand it if you so wish. Sorry, I'm scrolling through the dozens of okay. messages here, trying to figure out which one to choose. I'm going to just, because I know that we've only got another 15, 20 minutes or so, so I'm going to sort of skip around now. Um, I just want to flag this one up because I think it's an important thing. Um, Esther says, putting yourself out there is the most scary thing of all, and there's always a bad hair day or a zit on your nose. I've been there. I'm sure Melinda has too, although, you know, clearly knows it. I've got no but... hair. You know, <laughs> what I would you say care. to someone? I don't care. I really think that if you're talking from your heart and you totally believe in your message and you own who you are, all those things go away. They are so not important. They're only important because you think they're important. <laughs> um, and this, again, is, is the confidence thing. And it's easier to have confidence with people that you know and people that know and respect you and you know that before you go in than it is to go out there cold and scared and not know who you're going to talk to, which is what this whole thing is about. It's about finding a really comfortable base to launch from. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to just put yourself over that. It isn't as scary as you think, ultimately. It's more scary to you than it is to anyone else. And, you know, we've all been there. I remember doing a whole filming day once with this massive spot on my chin, and I did everything I could to cover it up, and I just went to my videographer, and I went, I've got a huge spot on my chin. And he looked at me, and he went, so you do. And I said, can you do whatever you can to make sure it doesn't show up in the videos? And ultimately, you couldn't see it at all. But, you know, it was me who was sort of carrying that with me, going, ah, what do I look like? I mean, it's really interesting what affects us because I can talk on television. I can, you know, I can talk on online, on film. 
put me in front of a room full of people. I mean, you've seen it at the conferences and I turn into, into jelly and I don't know what that's about. I just don't know what that's about, but it's very real for me. And what I do in that situation is I just tell people, you're scaring me, I'm turning to jelly, you know, and I'll, I'll sort of bring them into my place to get over it. And I think, you know, so maybe it's best to point out that you're having a bad hair day. I don't know if it's really worrying you. You know, people connect with you when you just go, I'm really nervous. They sort of go, oh, yeah, I know how you feel. I'd be the same if I was in your your shoes. Mm. Um, Okay, another question from Jennifer, which is a great one. It's about what's the best way to come up with a perfect brand name that doesn't sound forced? I want to be authentic and stand out. (laughs) Yeah, I've been going through this with a number of clients. Sometimes it just you get it immediately. And sometimes it's really tough. And I think beyond, again, so my, I put my commercial head on first here. And I think beyond being authentic, the most important thing is you can get the URL. <laughs> and that these days, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the whole thing. It's got to be memorable. It's got to be short. It shouldn't actually, um, it doesn't have to say skincare, beauty, whatever, because I think that limits you um, to what you might do in the future if this is your first business. Um, and the best way to do it is to make a name up. You know, I mean, often people come up with great names that they take from their particular culture in their language, but the issue is that not many people can spell them. Um, so you have to be careful. It's got to be as simple as possible um and that's how you do it yeah and you need consistent social media handles as well but i've watched people do this very cleverly by adding the word skin on the end or dot co or something like that but consistency is so important and i got this wrong in the beginning with my own personal handles i've got something different on every platform don't be like me have consistency um okay gosh so many questions but i think there's a really good one in here actually which has come back in a couple of questions so i'm going to just put up abby's but anna sort of touched on this as well should i be searching basically for packaging logo branding before i finished my formulations and anna in the chat also says you know i have a genius idea for my niche i've only been formulating for four months i feel i'm not ready as a formulator um i've heard this from a lot of people recently when do I know that my formulations are right? Should I make sure they're perfect before I even start on my brand? What would you say to that? Well, I think this question is probably more for you than for me because, um, you know, I, 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 I feel that it's really important to understand how to formulate um, and to know what you want to put in your products. But I think ultimately you're going to get someone else to make them for you and they're going to be batched up and scaled up and you need to have a contract manufacturer on board anyway to make sure that that will happen um, as easily and and, uh, as possible Um, so to me um, packaging logo and branding who you're going to sell to your logo and your branding are the first thing that you need to do Um, and and an idea of the products that you want to produce but uh, I, I don't think you need to know everything about formulating products before you launch but i do think you need to know everything about what you're going to create what your brand's going to look like and who you're going to sell to before you get out there and that's really why i mean this package that i'm offering i want people i want people right at the beginning of their journey so that we can nail this before and they can be excited about it before they start um one issue I, i i had great feedback last time i ran it Um, But I did have an issue with a couple of people who, because I will not look at an existing brand, and if I think it's wrong, not say so. (laughs) You know, there's some people that actually shouldn't be branding and selling products because that's not their strength. They should just be making products for other people. Yeah. Uh, A a lot of people think just because you can make a business out of it doesn't mean you should if it's not in your skill set. And whilst I will always give people a solution, a low cost solution to use what I can see in front of me or what they present to me, I will tell them if I think it's wrong. And if they spend a lot of money getting to where they were, uh, that can be hard news to receive, very hard news to receive. And I'm aware of that. So I really like to get people as early as possible so that we can get those things right before before they spend money, before they start spending yeah. serious money. I can't even begin to tell you how many people I've watched rebrand they launch, they made it themselves, then they go to a retailer and the retailer sits them down and goes, I'm not stocking you, this looks shocking, go and redo it. 
and takes the time to actually tell them that, which is very kind because I'm sure a lot of retailers receive a lot of brands that are unsuitable um, to, to be stocked in their in their outlets or their shops. Um, and then they have to go and redo it all and they end up with all this packaging that's wasted, which is a huge waste. And if they just invested up front to get it right, and really nail it and ask people for their opinions. I cannot even begin oh, to absolutely. tell you how many people absolutely. do not and ask for opinions. I don't. Don't listen to your Auntie Jean or your mum and your best friend. Don't listen to them. You need to ask your target market on every issue. And it often throws, throws up surprises. It often throws up real mm. surprises if you put things yeah. out there. I mean, you know, on your group and on my group, I really encourage people to do this before they commit to things, is to put something out there and get just do a poll and get feedback. It's often yeah. best to just do a poll rather than ask for feedback because <laughs> some of the feedback that comes back can be loaded. Um, you know, just say yes or no. Which of these? Do you like this or that or that? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's just about testing things out. You know, when I wanted to start my skincare brand, I wanted to call it Herb and Hedgerow because I love hedgerows. I love herbs. I wanted to make it all, you know, sort of green and lush. And this, I mean, this was 10 years ago. And it's taken me 10 years to discover that people have no idea how to spell the word hedgerow. In fact, most people who live in cities don't even know what a hedgerow is. It drives me insane. And I find myself to call centers because that's what the limited company is called that owns Formula Botanica. And I'm having to spell it out. I'm going H-E-D-G. And they're going hedgerow. Hedge grow. And I'm going, no. And if I had launched with that brand, I would have had so much trouble because I didn't get feedback on it. And that's the one thing I think people are terrified of doing. Sorry, complete digress. Well, we, we, had a, we had a we, we no, but we had a better one than that. I had a client whose name I think her name was Daria, and we wanted to call the brand Daria, and I had no problem with that, and it's great. And we put it out to the group, and three people came back and said, "Sounds like diarrhea," and it hadn't registered. It hadn't registered. You know? <laughs> no, <laughs> we went completely away from it. I know. I once had someone <laughs> in our in our group came out and said, "I want to create a brand. I'm going to call it Fecal Skincare," and and I just sat there and I went, "I don't know what to say." And luckily, one of the other students <laughs> came in and said, "The word fecal also means poop," and she went, "Oh, okay, yes, I won't do that." <laughs> so you have to get that feedback. Mm. Um, okay, let's see. I've got another question here from Anna, and I do apologize about the banging. I don't know what they think they're doing. Um, how about jumping on Amazon? So, what is your thoughts on a brand selling on Amazon? I think it's great. I mean, I think that they are they got it in terms. I mean, you know, if you if you understand, if you've been through the journey of selling your products to stores or selling or, or building the whole thing up, building up your sales channels, you will realize the value of having a totally efficient outfit that who's got you know star logistics and can reach millions of people oh look we've got company hello so this, this is chanel hello hello chanel this is chanel say hello oh she's gone um yeah but you you will you will realize the power of that and yes there's lots of reasons not to like amazon and they're taking over the world and all this stuff but it's a really quick way to move yourself forward. And yes, it costs money um, to sell on Amazon, but you haven't yet discovered what it's going to cost you to get in the doors of key retailers. Yeah, you know. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I know that we're coming to the end. I might see if I can squeeze a couple of questions in in a minute um, still, but I'd like to talk about your program now um, yeah. because you've got a new program out. The link to it is above or below this video, depending on where you're watching it. We are on Facebook and YouTube at the moment. Can you please tell me more about it? Yeah. Well, I've better tested it once, and this is why I had such fun doing it and such brilliant feedback from it, and that's why I wanted to do it again. So it's not my it's, – it's a three-figure program, not my usual four- and five-figure programs, <laughs> which is quite unusual for me. And it gets just to the heart of the matter. So um, it, uh, you get, you get an que a in-depth questionnaire – um, you get it back to me. You give me a week to digest it. I need a week to actually stop and and read it and and have a good good long think about it. And then we have an hour's chat where we absolutely hammer out what your what your brand should be. And if you're all if you've already got a business, you'll get um, an audit from me on what you've done so far as well. Like it or like it or hate it. Um, 
and I I do say what I think. So just be aware of that. I'm not going to apologise for it, but be be aware of it. I'm not for, I'm not I'm not very gentle because um, I want to save you money. Um, and then yeah. you also get three months free membership to my Fast Track to Success, which is my private membership group, where I will keep you um, accountable for what we've talked about. You get chance to ask me questions um you get a chance to book 20 minute one-to-one sessions with me we have expert workshops on there whatever um so you've got three months of that as well so it's a really really high value package the only thing that i'll say is that i have to limit the numbers that i take on it so i've no idea how many are going to take 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 me up on it but simply because it's very for me, it's going to be very intense for you. Short time, but very intense. And it is for me too. So mm-hmm. I cannot do hundreds of people. I can't sort of roll you through. Um, I, I want to yeah. give you um, my best on that. Yeah. So I just want to show you this one because it's lovely. It's from Carmen, who's obviously still on. She says, Melinda Koss was my mentor and I can truly oh, recommend her. And I think I've got Carmen. Carmen's products to hand. They are in the cupboard behind me. But Carmen runs Flower and Spice and is doing an amazing job with her brand and is going global. And yeah, very exciting. I got a few of those. <laughs> I love yes. it. I love it. In fact, on on um, on the other night on Clubhouse, I I did have a sense of being on awake because you had all these people coming up saying lovely things about me. It was all very embarrassing oh. being in my <laughs> own wake. <laughs> no, let's not go too morbid here. <laughs> <laughs> We need you around for many, many more years. Um, oh. Let's see. A couple of people have asked, do you recommend taking the program that you're offering called Nail Your Brand Message? Let me just put that back up on the screen, actually, whilst studying with Formula Botanica. So this is really, this ties in with what we were talking about earlier. Mm. If people are currently formulating, I mean, I personally would say yes, uh, because I think, you know, you, ca- you can't start too soon with nailing your brand message. But what advice would you have to the Formula Botanica students? Well, a- absolutely. I mean, apart from anything else, it will um, it might focus you on what your product should be um, and make you look deeper into those those areas while you're on the program. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, as I say, I really like to get people as early as possible because it's really about conceptualizing, but doing it so that when you hit when you're ready to really get out there, you know where you're going and you know who you're going to go to and how you're going to do it. Yeah, perfect. Couldn't have said that better. I mean, it. you see so many people, I see so many people go through our courses and they come into the course with a very fixed idea of what they want to make and sell yeah. and then they leave the course with a completely different idea. Yeah. So now is the time to really think about whilst you're formulating, whilst you're getting to grips with ingredients, what you actually want to create and what is deep within you, that authenticity that we've talked about today. Mm. So, yes. And also, if you're going to go the problem problem solving route, which is, you know, can be as long as it's not eczema, um, it can or acne, um, it can be it can be a great route to go on. Um, yeah. Again, then you can use your time at Formula Britannica even better because you can focus on what you want to produce or what you know you're going to produce. Yep. Yeah, I love that. So, um, a couple of people have said, where can they reach you? So, I'm well, going to answer that question. Quite, so- Someone's just signed up, so that's great. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> the program, just one of my emails popped through. Excellent. Um, yes. So the link so, is with this video. So if you scroll, if you're on Facebook, I think it's above the video. If you're on YouTube, it's below the video in the text. Go and find it, and uh, we will edit it afterwards as well to put the link right at the top. And go and check out Melinda's program. I can't recommend Melinda highly enough. We've worked with her for years. You know, she has done some amazing work with our graduates and students, mm-hmm. and you will get so much out of working with Melinda. But as she said, she can't take on everyone. And you've, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure we've had a good thousand views on this already in the last hour. So you want to be quick if you want to take part in the latest intake. Um, yeah. So when does it all start, Melinda? Um, well, it, 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 you'll, as soon as you sign up, you'll get the questionnaire. And then um, when you get it back to me, so it, it's open. It's open to now. I just, just opened it. Um, so um, I, as I say, I want you to give me a week to 10 days to get back to you. Um, you'll set up your appointment and then we're off. There you go. Yeah. It's that simple. (laughs) It's really simple, but it just it. it, I I know from as I say from the feedback that I got that it this really works. So it's great. It does. 
It does. And and uh, Melinda's um, the success that the graduates are seeing by working with Melinda has been phenomenal. So I'm very excited for them as well. So thank you so much for your time today, Melinda. It's been really lovely hanging out with you again. Thank I know we did it on yeah. Clubhouse on Monday, but obviously we couldn't see each other. I have to say yeah. I do prefer this interface yeah. myself. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah I, I wish you lots of uh, success with the new program. It's been really Thank lovely, you. you know, answering all the questions and hearing from you again. And I'm sure we will do more of these in the future. So thank okay. you. And thank you, everybody, for coming to listen to us. Yes, thank you. Thank you for all your questions. I'm sorry if we didn't get to all of them, but I tried to make sure that we we combined as many as we could to, to answer your questions. So I hope that you found it useful. And lots of people have said thank you uh, for your time and thank you for your, uh, for your input, Belinda. So awesome. Okay. Have a lovely day, everyone. See you all soon. Bye. Bye.